Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tonight's guest is Jay Hortonberry. He has spoken on many radio shows about his conversion from Freemasonry and he runs a Facebook page called Freemasonry Facts. Hi Jay. Hi Laura, how are you doing? I'm okay, how are you? Great. Good. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much for, for being our guest today. And um, is it snowing today? No, actually, it's almost 60 degrees. Oh, right. <laughs> it was snowing recently. Yes, yes. Well, that's the Cincinnati weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not snowing here now, but it's very windy. All right. So, Jay, can you start off by telling us a little of your family background? Were there any family members who belonged to a Masonic Lodge? No, actually, um, nobody in my immediate family were free, did find out later after becoming a Freemason that a few of my cousins were Freemasons. Um, we didn't really go to church or anything, but uh, there was a the Shrine Burns Institute in Cincinnati, and I kind of really liked what they did. They helped kids with burns and stuff like that, and they did it all for free, and... Uh, as time went by, I learned how to to get involved with helping that out, helping out the Shrine Burns Institute. And is that when you got involved with Freemasonry itself? Yeah, it was actually a, a Shrine Circus. We used to go there to support the the Burns Institute, which I later found out that the money for the circus doesn't go to the hospitals. Oh. But... Um, we, we went to the circus, and uh, I got involved um, with the, the Shrine Clown Unit, and I ended up getting hired on and started working at the Syrian Shrine Mosque in Cincinnati, Ohio. And that's when I really started asking, hey, how do I become a Shriner? And they told me that before I could become a Shriner, I had to be a Freemason. And, uh, but they wouldn't ask me to become a Freemason. I had to pursue it on my own. Okay, so so how did you do that then? How did you pursue it? Well, I um, I started asking guys uh, what I needed to do to become a Freemason, and they told me that, well, you have to ask. And I said, well, I am asking. <laughs> so I, I ended up filling out a petition uh, and had two people, and that began my journey. I entered into the lodge not knowing anything about it other than, the jokes and, and uh, uh, comments that guys would make when they found out that I was going to become a Mason because I, I was I was friends with a lot of Shriners. And um, uh, anytime that I said something about, hey, I'm going into to the lodge in Chevy, it, they, they were all very excited and very happy. It, there, was a, there was a whole lot of um, support there, which at that time in my life, I didn't really have a lot of. Um, I'd, I'd really been suffering from depression, so... Any kind of positive stuff that I was getting from those guys was really, really good for me at that moment. Yeah. Uh, little did I know how detrimental it would be uh, to me. So, so how long did that process take till you were actually accepted and initiated in? Well, it took about two weeks for them to come out and interview me. And they come out to your house and they talk to your wife and... And make sure that it's okay with her that you join because they don't want to cause any problems. But um, the the really interesting thing is, is at that time, I was probably one of the fastest, if not fastest, person to go through the Blue Lodge. I went through the first three degrees in three months' time, which meant they conferred the degree on me. I had the exam at the following business meeting. They conferred the degree on me at the, the next meeting. At the very next business meeting, you could only take the exams at the business meetings. So at, at for three, 
two months in a row, I, I was ready to pass to the next degree, and I became a Master Mason in three months' time, and that was back in November, I think in 92, 91. Yeah, that is fast, isn't it? Yeah, and then from there, I went right in the spring, and uh, that's a two-day class, and that's where I got um, the fourth through the 32nd degree of Freemasonry conferred upon me. I wasn't actually a participant in the degree work, per se, because they had a proctor do that for you, and everybody in the class just sat there and watched and then um, right out of that in April, I went right into the Syrian shrine, um, the ancient Arabic order of the mystic shrine, um, in May and became a Shriner. And immediately when I became a Shriner, I went right into the Shrine Clown unit. So it took me less than a year to uh, become a, a Shriner, a third degree Mason and a 32nd degree Mason. Less than a year to become a 32nd degree Mason? Correct, yes. So do you mean that you went through all the degrees, one leading up to 32, in less than a year? Well, yeah, and the way they do that is, is it's like I said, it's a two-day event. So right. four, four through like 19 uh -huh. is one day. They confer all, right. all those degrees on you in one day. Oh, wow. And then the next day they confer... The, the, the following degrees. And they skip a couple of them right. because they, they don't deem them as important. Yeah. But then they encourage you to go back and follow, pick that up. Yeah. But when I got, when I, after I became a um, third degree Master Mason, which is technically the highest degree because you can't do anything else unless you're a third degree Master Mason. Uh -huh. So they consider that the highest degree. After that, I took the uh, um, opportunity to get in the chairs, what they call the chairs, and it was I was in line to become an officer. So in seven years' time, I could have became uh, the master of the lodge, but I ended up bailing out before. And would that have been would that have been the thirty third degree then? No, no, a master, the master of law, the lodge does not have to be a 33rd degree. The 33rd degree is a degree, um, is, it's an elite degree, and it's by invitation. And um, usually it is bestowed upon people that have a lot of money or have contributed a lot to um, the betterment of Freemasonry in some way, shape, yeah. or form. Yeah, someone who can be very influential. Correct. As well. Correct. So yes. could, you te could you tell us, Jay, what exactly, um, people might be wondering, well, what did you actually do there? What, what were the classes? What happened at the degree initiations? What actually went on and, and why, why is it um, not as harmless as it may first sound? Well, first of all, a lot of people think, uh, Non-Masons and Masons alike think that Freemasonry is pretty much like a club or a fraternity or something like that. And and it's actually quite the opposite. Freemasonry is actually a monotheistic religion. They believe that um, there is one God. They also believe that they're know the they the only ones that know the true name of the, of the one true God. And... Um, uh, they are a religion. They they simply partake in things that pertain to being a religion. They have an obligation to a deity. They perform acts of worship, be be it um, good works, good deeds, perform rituals. All that's dedicated to a deity, and they implement a sim system of faith. Um, the system of faith that they implement is they believe in what they're doing is good in result of what they're doing. So that's implementing a system of faith. So by the very definition of the word religion, Freemasonry is a religion. And with that being said, you have people out there that believe in Jesus Christ really at what they're doing in Freemasonry and comparing it to the Word of God, which is, which is where we all should be... Uh, turning to for our foundation. We should be building our foundation on the Word of God. And if we're not doing that, then 
it's the house built on sand, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the rituals them in the, of themselves are pretty bland, uh, with the exception of the third degree. Um, the first two degrees, you're led around the lodge, blindfolded. Um, you go into a room and you're stripped down to your to your underwear, and they give you a pair of pants to wear, and they they dress you in a specific way, and you have a shirt on that's open. And when you first walk into the lodge, um, after you knock three times, and you, there's a, a fair amount of commotion, they and and uh, I don't know rituals. You know, you knock three times, and the guy tells says something, uh, and he uh, closes the door, and then the guy inside the lodge goes to the master mason and repeats loudly what the man that is leading you into the lodge had said, which is, you know, that I'm a blind guy looking for light. I'm seeking light. Well, when you get into the lodge, they, they, they stick you and point and um, like a sword or the point of a compass or something like that on your left breast to impress upon you the importance of keeping the secret of Freemason. Yeah. Around, and you, you go to the altar, and they use your holy book. For me, because I'm here in America, and I, I would say 80% of the people in America claim to be Christian, so they use the Holy Bible in Masonic lodges in, and most of the American lodges. However, what determines uh, the book on the, on the altar is, is um, what the non- what what your faith is? For me, it was Christian, so they used the Holy Bible there. And there was a Hindu candidate. It would be the books of the Hindu religion that would be on the altar for him when he went up to take his oath. Yeah. And if it if it was a Muslim, it would be the Quran, and and so on. Um. So with that being said, the the the, the rituals. There's nothing really. I mean, there's there's rumors of of uh you know goat sacrifices and stuff like that and i can honestly tell you that i never saw anything like that in any of the rituals but that doesn't change the fact that there's a lot of spiritual um connotation to what they're doing yeah i understand that i've heard some people like you who say they didn't see sacrifices and i've heard other people say that they did um but but either way i think just the very fact they have rituals itself, any kind of rituals, obviously there's demons involved, whether they know there's demons there or not, and um, just the very twisting of, of, of scripture, because there's a lot of um, bits of the Bible taken and twisted into the different degrees, isn't there? Absolutely, absolutely. They Not only do they take bits and pieces of the Word of God and inter but uh, and misinterpret it and and twist the meanings. They also uh, intermingle the teachings of Jesus with pagan religions, and there's there's so much to that. And and like you said, the demonic force that's around there. The very fact that you go into this lodge and it's dark when we go in and they're confirmed, it is done in darkness and. And that's that's where the enemy does all of his work. It's done in darkness. Yeah. It's to hide. Um, but uh, one of the biggest misconceptions about Freemasonry is its age and its relevance to um, the building of Solomon's Temple. There is absolutely no factual information that that connects Freemasonry with the building of Solomon Temple. There's a, no historical document, no secular document, no biblical document that documents Freemasonry being that old. Freemasonry didn't come around until the late 1700s, mid to late 1700s. Yeah. And um, but um, but they lay the claim that they uh, they make the lofty claim that by keeping the the um, Secrets of Freemasonry and and by being virtuous and doing good deeds, 
that you can earn salvation and get into heaven. And that is the biggest problem with Freemasonry in of itself is the fact that they teach a false form of Freemasonry. Before I came to Christ, I truly believed that, wow, th I, got the, I got the right direction here. This really makes sense. If I do good, I'm going to go to heaven. If I do bad, I'm going to go to hell. And this really helped me focus on being good and being virtuous. And, and it did make me better to some degree. But you take something that's good, you take a person that's good, and if they don't know Jesus, they don't get into heaven. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. I didn't say that, you know? Mm -hmm. And and that's the biggest that's the biggest thing. And that's why I really focus my Freemasonry facts. We we focus more on from a biblical standpoint and we focus on the first three degrees um, because that's the foundation of Freemasonry. In the shrine, when I became a shriner, and and that's uh, an appendant body of Freemasonry, I did take my oath on the Quran, and I did confess that Allah was God. And that, and every Freemason, or every Freemason that becomes a Shriner has done that. And I've had guys argue with me time and time again that, oh no, I never took my oath on the Quran, and, and I know better because I will set up the all. Um, I, I've, I've been on both sides of the the fence. I was asked by my lodge members to um, become a part of the uh, Masonic More Light program, which was uh, one of those by invitation things, by invitation only things, where you can go in and you can learn more about Freemasonry and become more involved. Because I was so young and that, and I, and I did the degree work to such. Uh, uh, a really, I mean, I was just really good with the degree work. I don't know why I, I, I was terrible in school, but when it came to this degree work, I could memorize it like no other. Yeah. And, and I was really passionate about being a Freemason. And I remember who was a Christian that, oh, she didn't know what she was talking about. Freemasonry isn't as bad as she said. Uh, I also worked at the Masonic Temple downtown Cincinnati, which was the home of the Scottish Rite. And it was so funny because I was a maintenance guy, and there was a, an old gentleman there. His name was Arthur Freeman, and um, I cannot wait to meet him again in heaven because he was old. He was an old southern black man, and he would just go around singing the gospel all the time. And we would have these discussions about me being in Freemasonry, and he's like, Jay, you're wrong. It's, there's there's no reason for you to be in Freemasonry. It, that's terrible. It's, and he would tell me, you know, whosoever believe, calls on the name of Jesus gets into heaven, and that's it. And I would blow him off like, you know, he was just an old coot. But but I loved him anyway, and I would, we would, he, he, he took me under his arms and kind of, of, of talked to me, but he didn't do it in a way to make me feel bad about being a Freemason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, and then it was my sister-in-law with her. Um, she invited me to a church, invited my family to, to the church that she goes to. And uh, I actually went there to prove that it was a cult. <laughs> <laughs> because she, she would show up at church, or she would show up at family functions, and she'd be there come straight from church and she'd be happy and 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 just ecstatic and real joyful and everything and she's like i'm like where did you come from she goes i just came from church i was like you don't go to church and get happy that's just crazy <laughs> <laughs> so so i really and honestly uh, and also put it into the whole god thing i was very happy with being a mason and and a freemason and i uh so I go to this church, and the Holy Spirit connects with me. And, and when he did, uh, what, what opened the door for me to get out of Freemasonry? I was standing in line. I was going to this church for about three or four months. And I was standing in line, and this rather tall gentleman came up and kind of shoulder bumped me and was like, Hey, how you doing? And I'm like, Hey, what's up? He goes, You're a Freemason, right? I said, yeah, I sure am. He said, you should go to uh, 
X Masons for Jesus and uh, check it out. <laughs> and I was like, okay, sure. Well, at that time, I wasn't wearing all the Masonic jewelry and belt buckles and stickers and all that stuff. I didn't have any of that stuff on. Yeah. Um, just because it was that, it was just a point in time in my life where the honeymoon period of me being in a Freemasonry was over. I was very proud to be a Freemason, but I didn't go around, you know, stuffing it down people's faces all the time. Yeah. So, so I went home that evening, and six hours later, for reasons I cannot explain, I was downloading a resignation form from free, uh, from this website. Um, Ephesians 5 11, which is a phenomenal page. Um, they have a resignation form on there. I downloaded it and they said, send it to your blue lodge. Well, I took it to the, I, I sent it to my blue lodge. I sent it, which is the, the first three degrees of Masonic. Um, the Masonic degrees is the blue lodge. And I sent it to the shrine, they're in shrine temple and I sent it to the shrine clown unit. And I instantly lost a lot of friends. Yeah. It was very, it was very sad. It was a very sad time in my life. However, I knew I was doing the right thing, and and shortly after that, I, because of this sadness that I was feeling because I lost all these friends, um, I was like, and, and they didn't even want to agree to disagree. I um, I I, I asked myself, did I get out? because of what I read on the website and that's it or did I get out because I really believe what the website said and I started probably a five to six year in-depth study of Freemasonry and the Word of God just just comparing the basic facts um, the fact that Freemasonry is a religion the fact that um, Freemasonry does not identify the deity of Jesus um, simply uh, by the fact that you cannot pray in the name of Jesus in Lodge. Um, there are exceptions to that rule because there are Lodges that all the guys are in, are, are uh, Christians, mm -hmm. so they will pray in the name of Jesus, but if they're doing it during an inspection, they can be reprimanded for, for praying in the name of Jesus because they don't want to offend the Hindu brother, the Muslim brother, this uh, you know, the Satanist brother, because all you got to do is to get into Freemasonry is believe in a supreme being. That supreme being could be a tree and you can get in. Yeah. And in France, they do allow atheists to become uh, Freemasons, which I'm not sure exactly how that works, but <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really interesting. And um, it kind of reminds me when you mentioned earlier about uh, you know the Masons believe that that they they're the only ones that really know the name of God and that they are seeking light. Um, it, it reminds me when when I was a spiritualist, my uncle he was a, a top Mason and he was also the head of a spiritualist church. So he was a medium and a Mason, and that was compatible because. Um, you know, mediums believe that Lucifer, that they're seeking Lucifer's light. Right, right, exactly. So I was going to um, ask you, did, did you, when you were a Mason, did you, were you aware that, that Lucifer was the one that they um, looked up to, or did, did the senior Masons keep that a secret from you? Well, it's, it's hard to say, because when I was, every... Every bit of degree work that I went into, had they had they purposely brought up that we're praying to Satan, I, I would have been gone in a heartbeat because I grew up in a very superstitious and very. I had a bigger fear of the devil than I did uh, respect for God. I believed more in the in what Satan could do than what God could do. Just because of my upbringing, I, I have uh, a, a couple sisters that have been involved in occult type stuff, and um, but uh, we used to do all sorts of things when I was a kid, and so so had they prayed anything like that, I would have been gone in a heartbeat. I would have never stayed engaged. Yeah. Uh, 
I was told at one time by a person that's not a 33rd that that's where they tell you that um, uh, you're praying to Satan. However, I cannot, I, I, I even hate bringing it up because somebody will say, well, Jay from Freemasonry Facts says that they're praying to Satan. Uh, because I don't know. But what I but what I do know is is everything that Freemasonry teaches is so far away from what Jesus teaches that that the only the only deity that they could be praying to would be not God. Not God. So what does that leave? If you're not praying to the one true God, then what are you praying to? Yeah. You know, and and, and that's that's Satan. It has to be. I think as well the kind of warning bell is the fact that most lodges forbid anyone to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so they're not forbidding them to pray to any other god. Um, well, so, so that's well, a kind of little sign that Lucifer's involved there somewhere, you know. Yeah, well, they don't they don't say that you can't. Well, they tell you that you cannot close like in you know when we when I finish praying out and and I, it's almost like a signature and I. I I don't even think that that's wholly uh, correct either, but because I think you can pray in Jesus' name without saying signing the prayer with "in Jesus' name," you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But 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 they but you are not allowed to voice in Jesus' name when praying because every lodge opens with prayer, every lodge closes with prayer, and there's a prayer said at some point in between, and none of those prayers can be closed in the name of Jesus. Or opened in the name of Jesus, but you can't. You you also can't praise Allah or or pray any specific name. And the reason is is because you might have a Muslim, a Jew, Christian, um, a, a, a Satanist, a Buddhist, a, a Unitarian, and a Wiccan. You might have all these people in the same lodge. Yeah. And to to break down that barrier and prove that we're all praying to the same God, that's that's what they do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So so it's 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 not that they exclusively exclude Jesus' name; they exclude every religious name because the the, the universe is how they refer to God. And and um, sorry, did you say uh, the did you say the great architect of the universe? I, I never saw it, but that's what they call him, the great yeah. architect of the universe. Yeah, I just and, didn't hear you there. And um, they uh, the other thing that that Freemasonry does um, along the lines of things that you know that are wrong is in one of the degree w degrees, and I don't know off the top of my head because I don't have my notes in front of me. Um, in the Scottish Rite degree, there's a Scottish Rite degree where they anoint the candidate as a priest in the order of Melchizedek, and there is nobody on this planet yeah. that in the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. um, if you read through Hebrews, you'll find out that uh, Melchizedek was a priest that showed up after Abraham conquered a Mekilvedek, Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder, and he did everything that you would do to God or to Jesus. Yeah. Well, in, in Hebrews, they go on to explain that, you know, this priest in the order of Mekilvedek is Jesus, because there's other scripture in the Bible that says that that God had anointed Jesus as the priest forever in the order of Mekilvedek. Yeah. And, and and these are things that people don't fully understand. It's it's really free teachings of Freemasonry of people, and and including myself because I was very ignorant. Because I, man, like I said, I was so full into this that that I mean, I was helping people, teaching people about Freemasonry. I was doing. I mean, I was doing a lot of stuff. I was helping the shrine. I was doing stuff to, to, to do degree work in the shrine and, and the Scottish Rite. And so I really, truly believed what I was doing. But 
what we need to do, what not what we need to do, but what we need to pray to happen is that the Holy Spirit move in the hearts of believers that are in Freemasonry, open their open their eyes to the truth, and let them do their own side by side comparison of the Word of God and the teaching. Yeah. Now, Absolutely. You, a lot, a lot of times, uh, people will accuse me of cutting and pasting stuff. And but it's it's all from the Bible, it's, and I'm like, yeah, I, I might be cutting and pasting, and and I am saying the same thing. But once you say the truth, no matter what argument you throw at it, the truth will diffuse it. Um, you can see see arguments stop dead cold when I bring up something and I point out the fact. I mean, I I quote the the Masonic rituals on my web, on my Facebook page. Yeah. Um, I have the entire rituals written out with little ex- explanations uh, in a, in photo albums with pictures. And, and I do that. So to help the believers that know the word of God to see the, the, the error in, in their uh, agreeing with Freemasonry, that it can help them be a better Christian it simply can't. It just simply can't. Yeah. Yeah. So, tell us, Jay, what advice would you give Christians who are trying to reach out to those in Freemasonry? Um, boy, the first thing I, I, I can say is love them. Because chances are it's a friend or a loved one that you know that's involved in Freemasonry. Love them and understand, especially if they're passionate about being a Freemason, understand that they are clinging to what they they think is good. Um, when my sister-in-law tried to convince me that what I was doing was wrong, I just laughed it off. Yeah. I knew I was. And then the next thing I would recommend is when you're loving them, share with them the truths that you know. Ask them questions. Engage them to where they feel like they're in control of the conversation. Say, you know, you can come to my Freemasonry facts page and say, this guy on this web, on this Facebook page says that Freemasonry is a religion. What do you think about that? And let them say what they they have to say and show them or tell them, you know, show them the definition of the word religion. Show them the definition of monotheistic. Just use the basic facts. Mm-hmm. You, you can't argue somebody into believing something that they don't want to believe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You just have to... That would be the next biggest thing is pray for them. Love them and pray for them. Because, man, I'm telling you, it, I have a brother that I kind of teased a little bit when I was becoming a Freemason. And he was like, well, I'll just read the book. And I flipped the book to him. And, of course, it's all written in code, if you will. So if a person found the book, they couldn't read what the ritual was. Uh And I kind of teased him about it. And I kept asking him, man, you need to become a Freemason. Well, it wasn't probably six. He comes to me and says, I'm going to be raised to the degree of Master Mason tomorrow. I was like, no. <laughs> so I am praying. I am praying uh-huh. for him. Yeah. Um, and and do um, feel for the people that have loved ones uh, because I'm I've been on both sides. I've been the loved one that somebody wanted to get out of Freemasonry, and I have a loved one that's in Freemasonry that I want to get out too. P- plus, all the people that I don't know. That's why. I really firmly believe that God put me on this. I, I, I kind of call it a rescue mission um, to get as much factual information out there. Mason, yeah. diffuse what the enemy's doing. Absolutely, and I, I've been, um, you know, I've been a member of your your Facebook page for a few years, and I, I don't think there's any others like it actually on Facebook. It's just such a wealth of of helpful information. And can you, Thank t- you could you also tell me, Jay, when you did leave the, the Masonic Lodge, did you throw out the Masonic paraphernalia, uh, the, the clothes and so on? Uh, I, I did uh, 
throw out my apron. I got rid of um, both of my fezes and, and a fair amount of stuff. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit gripped me. I start pitching all my rituals and Masonic. I have a Masonic heirloom Bible and all this stuff. Yeah. And I, I also have a copy, a hardback copy of uh, Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma. And for the, just a side note, for those people that say Albert Pike uh, had nothing to do with Freemasonry, uh, even the Freemasons that say, well, he didn't do it that much, he did. And everything is very much a part of all of the rituals throughout the Masonic uh, 33 degrees. But... Uh, so I was getting ready to pitch all this stuff, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit kind of convicted me real quick. He said, you have in your hands the enemy's playbook. Mm-hmm. Use it. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, okay. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just like a football team watches films of other teams playing. Mm-hmm. They want to know what the plays are. Yeah. So I have the playbooks, and it makes it so easy for me to quote verbatim what the ritual says so that so that I'm not saying, well, the best I can remember is this. No, I, I know because it says so right here, and I remember being a part of it. Yeah. That's interesting you should say that. When, when I left spiritualism, I burned everything, um, including, you know, the membership card and things like that. And in recent years on my YouTube channel, you always get one or two people that will say, oh, you probably never were a spiritualist and you're just lying about all that. And I think, right. oh, I, I wish now I had kept my membership card so that I could prove to them. But at the end of the day, if people don't want to believe you, they won't believe you, I suppose. Right. Um, can you tell us, Jay, what are the main changes that have taken place in your life since you've become a Christian? Uh, oh, wow, man, my life has changed time and time again, and I'm going through another change right now. Um, I'm learning more and more how to, to lean on what God has for me. Um, when, before I was a Christian, uh, I was suicidal. I, when I was eight years old, I attempted suicide with a, a loaded 357 mag, and, and God intervened. And, and kept anything from happening. Mm-hmm. Um, just before I got married, after I, I was in Freemasonry, I'd been in Freemasons for a while, um, uh, and I got married. Just before I got married, um, I was suffering depression so bad, I was considering um, suicide a second time. Um, I, I lived my life in depression and being miserable, um, for a long time, uh, I, I used to to uh, joke with people and tell people that my life sucked so bad that when I walked down the street, telephone poles would lean towards me because my life sucked so bad. Yeah. But uh, uh, after I came to Christ, uh, it was funny because my son, who's now 13, was a baby, and he had gone – he – was going through this issue. We still don't know what it was, but we had to take him to the, to the hospital to have blood work done on him. And they were drawing like nine vials of blood out of him at a time. And this went on for about two months. And I'm giving you a very condensed version of this. Yeah. But, but, um, before this happened, my wife was prayed for. The gentleman said that God wants you to know in two weeks that he's going to be with you. Well, at that two-week mark was when uh, my son had his doctor's appointment as a baby, and all this stuff started happening. They were thinking uh, different types of diseases. They were thinking kidney issues, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all this stuff for him. And all this time, had had I not known Christ, I would have been ecstatic. I would have been very uh, angry and, and unpredictable. Yeah. But through this whole thing, I had this peace about me. And I remember going to my pastor, and I told him, I said, I was, I was crying. And I told him, I said, I, said I, I don't understand this. I said, this little baby could die, could be dying. He could be in the becoming. Yeah. 
you know, a vegetable or whatever, or yeah. or he could be fine or whatever. And I don't know, but I just, I for whatever reason, I I'm not upset about it, and I I don't feel right. It took me a long time to get used to feeling content, being content. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, that that's just yep. such an awesome testimony to to the love of God and and the trust that that you had developed in in Him. Yeah, it it took me a while, but uh, I'm just now getting to the point where he's. He, I can tell when he's leading me, and I'm and I'm more apt to follow without questioning. Yeah, amen. But that's really such a wonderful testimony, Jane. It's so interest, interesting listening to you. Could you please now tell the? We're almost at the end. Please tell the. Um, radio listeners details of your Facebook page sure you can find me at Freemasonry Facts uh, on Facebook just type in Freemasonry Space Facts Facebook in the Google search and it'll pop up or you can type in um, my my website which is uh, www.freemasonryfacts.webstarts.com and you can connect my free on my uh, Facebook page from there. And if you have any questions, you can always shoot me an email at uh, freemasonryfactsyahoo.com. And, um, yeah, that's about that, it. <laughs> I don't have any great. Other- That's great. What I'll do is I'll put all that information on my blog as well so that, that listeners can check out on my blog if they didn't catch everything you said there. Okay. Thank you. So that's us at the end now, Jay, but just before we close, could you please pray for listeners? There may be Freemasons listening or Christians or non-Christians, anyone. Could you please pray just as you feel led? Absolutely. Father God, we praise you and give you glory. I, I personally thank you for the opportunity to, to do this. To, to, to You've asked... Uh, to go when you tell me to go. Lord, I pray that there is an, an outbreak in the Masonic Lodges of people at raising their hands and asking questions. What are we actually doing here? Well, how do, does this... Uh, Lord, I pray for the, the believers, anybody that professes your name that is a, a follower of you and, and involved in Freemasonry, I pray, Lord, that their eyes are opened right now. Just, just miraculously open. Drop those scales off their eyes and let them see. It's, it is. And when they just make their decision to leave, I pray, Lord, that you give them the strength and the courage to speak up and lead their their so-called brothers in the lodge to you, to the true light. And, and to, to free them as well, Lord, so that they don't leave anybody behind. Lord, I know uh, it's, it's uh, sweet to change their minds. So I pray for those loved ones that are praying for uh, their, their friends and family members that, that, that know people that are Freemasons. Lord, I pray that you give them peace, give them discernment. Give them words of wisdom to speak into their lives and to help their friends be freed. In Jesus' name, we pray Thank you so much, Lord, because you're an awesome God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Well, I hope, listeners, you were all encouraged by Jay's testimony today, and thank you for listening. Please tune in again next time for another powerful testimony. And thank you, Jay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. 
If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.